Hi, my name is Chris Rycroft and I'm an Associate Professor in Applied Mathematics at Harvard. I'm the lead instructor for Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods that's offered in the Fall 2020 semester. In this video we're going to review some of the logistics for the course and give an overview to the material that's going to be covered. Scientific computation has really become an indispensable tool in many areas of research and industry. And whether we're doing some large-scale data analysis problem or we're trying to simulate some complicated physical phenomenon, we're really faced with having to translate mathematical ideas into something that a computer can efficiently understand and process. In this course, we're going to look at the mathematics behind many well-established algorithms in scientific computing, and we're going to explore their use through examples from many different disciplines. The course is designed as a broad overview of the subject, and will cover many different topics such as in data fitting, optimization and the numerical solution of differential equations. After taking this course, you should be able to design and analyze numerical algorithms and more effectively use scientific software. Nowadays, we're very fortunate to live in a time where many scientific computing algorithms are available to us as libraries in languages such as Python, MATLAB and Mathematica. But it's often really useful to understand exactly how those libraries work. That can help us understand the efficiency of one algorithm versus another and understand the various limitations and error that one algorithm may have versus another. AM205 has a course website, courses.cs.harvard.edu slash courses slash AM205 and that's a central place to look for any course material and links to other sites that we may use in the course. I'll be having office hours on Zoom twice a week I'll be having one that's on Tuesdays from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Time and a second one that's on Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. The course has a co-instructor, Professor Ji Ming Kwang, and he'll be involved in events throughout the semester. We also have a great team of TFs, uh, Jovan Andreevich, Nick Durr, Danyan He, Baptiste Lemaire, Luna Lin, Jiayin Lu, Zhao Liu, and Matthew Mias, and hopefully we'll get to meet them throughout the semester. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, we're expecting that many students will be taking AM205 remotely this year, and we've therefore adjusted the course structure so that you'll be able to take it from any place around the world. The following material will be posted to the course website. We'll post a complete set of notes and slides, and we'll also post a complete set of videos split into two types. There'll be a core set of videos that cover the core course material and there'll also be an extended set of videos that cover additional worked examples and derivations. We aim to offer two different tracks of course instruction. We're going to offer a traditional plus track that will be based around two Zoom lectures at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And they will be a flexible length, probably between around 40 minutes and 80 minutes each section and they'll be designed around natural breaks in the material. In addition, students in this track will be expected to review the extended videos in their own time. We're also planning to offer a flipped classroom session if there's enough interest, and this will involve students watching all the videos and then attending two sessions a week where they review the material with a group of their peers that's facilitated by one of the teaching team either myself, Ji Ming, or one of the teaching fellows. We're hopefully going to organize these in the first week of the semester. One of the best things about AM205 is getting to meet your classmates who are also really interested in this material. Due to the online-only nature of this semester, the course is going to feature a number of mechanisms that will encourage online interaction with your peers. The course is going to have a Slack channel that will be used for real-time messaging with your peers and also the teaching team. And we'll also make use of the Piazza website, which is a great platform for asking questions and receiving answers on anything from homework assignments to lecture material. There'll also be some regular social activities, including hopefully an AM205 photo hour that will feature photo submissions from students taking the course. And we think this will be really interesting, particularly because people will be based in many different locations around the world. Throughout the semester, we're going to offer a number of online workshops where students will have to work together in small teams between one and three on a short assignment. 
We're going to have a number of different types of activities, such as programming workshops, open-ended problems, discussions of papers from the scientific computing literature, and also final project presentations. At this time, we're still finalizing the list of group activities that we plan to offer, but some examples include an introduction of Python, Linux terminal wizardry, using data fitting to image the comet Neowise that was present in the skies during July, looking at differential algebraic integrators that will go beyond the standard material that we cover on differential equations, looking at Kalman filters, a really interesting technique that you can use for synthesizing information from real measurements, the fast Fourier transform, which is a classic algorithm in scientific computing, further optimization methods beyond the standard ones that we cover in the course, and implementing the multigrid algorithm, a really rapid way to solve linear systems. The course has a number of prerequisites. You'll be expected to know some calculus and linear algebra, and the course will touch on partial differential equations, but no detailed knowledge of this will be required, and so we don't expect you to have taken a partial differential equations course in the past. We also expect you to have some programming experience in some language, roughly at the level of an introductory programming course, such as at Harvard, the Computer Science 50 course. AM205 tends to attract a broad range of students from many different backgrounds, and where possible, the material is structured to make it accessible for a wide range of backgrounds and abilities. And we're really keen to keep a broad range of students in the course, and so the teaching team will be very happy to help you if you require extra assistance. AM205 will feature a number of in-class demonstrations using the Python programming language. And there are several reasons why we choose to use Python in this course. Firstly, it's freely available, it's widely used, and it's versatile. It's an interpreted language, which means that it's good for small tasks without the need for any compilation. It also has great linear algebra support via the NumPy library, and there's also additional extensions in the SciPy library. And Python also has the Matplotlib li library, which is great for doing visualization and graphing. There are many other languages that are used for scientific computing. There are other interpreted languages, such as MATLAB, Julia, Perl, or GNU Octave. And there are also compiled languages like Fortran, C, and C++. AM205 is structured in such a way that you can complete the assignments in any language of your choice. The only thing that we ask is that it should be fairly easy for the teaching staff to be able to run your code. If you plan to use a language that's not listed above, then we ask that you contact the teaching staff to ask us about it. One thing that's useful is that MATLAB shares many similarities to Python. And in previous years, students who've been familiar with MATLAB have actually found it fairly easy to follow the in-class examples in Python. In fact, a number of functions actually share the same names between MATLAB and Python. For example, functions like linspace and i are actually common between the two languages. For programming, there's an assignment zero posted on the website, and it provides a few problems that indicate the expected familiarity with programming and going into this course. This assignment will not be assessed, but it should give you some idea of whether you have the required familiarity or whether you might need some additional assistance from the teaching team. If you have any questions about programming, then feel free to contact one of the teaching team via Slack or Piazza. AM205 is structured around six units, there's an introductory unit of zero that covers some of the fundamental ideas in scientific computing, such as how computers process arithmetic and the typical errors that we expect to get. Unit one for the course will cover data fitting and we'll look at topics such as polynomial interpolation, splines, linear least squares, and nonlinear least squares. Unit two for the course will cover numerical linear algebra, so all of the methods that we can use for solving and manipulating large matrices on computers. We'll look at the LU factorization and the Cholesky factorization that can be used for solving large linear systems of equations. And we'll also look at the QR factorization and the singular value decomposition that are very useful in many large-scale data analysis problems. The third unit will be on numerical calculus. And we'll look at topics such as numerical differentiation, numerical integration. We'll look at how to solve ordinary differential equations on a computer We'll look at the Euler method and the Runge-Kutter methods. We'll also talk about stability of different numerical solvers. 
We'll also talk a bit about boundary value problems and some partial differential equations that we'll solve using the final difference method. The fourth unit of the course is on nonlinear equations and optimization. We'll look at root finding, both for the univariate and multivariate cases. We'll look at conditions that you can impose on a function to guarantee that you might have an optimal solution. We'll also provide a survey of optimization methods. The final unit of the course will be on eigenvalue methods, many of which involve iterative algorithms. We'll look at the power method and the inverse iteration, which are some basic methods you can use for solving eigenvalue problems numerically. We'll also look at the QR algorithm, which is kind of an improved method that, that you can use. We'll also touch on the multigrid method, which is kind of a very powerful method for solving large linear systems. And we'll also look at some Krylov methods, such as the Lanchos algorithm and the Arnoldi algorithm. And in general, the material for the course will be similar to what's been given in previous years by myself, David Nezevich, and Ephthymius Katsiris. And if you look on the website, we actually have an archive of material from previous years. The assessment for the course will be based on three components. 62% of the grade will be based on five homework assignments with equal weighting. There will also be 6% of the grade that's awarded for participation in group activities throughout the semester. The remaining 32% of the grade will be based on a final project. And I'll talk about these different components in more detail later. In previous years, AM205 has actually involved a take-home midterm, but due to, due to the logistical challenges of offering this across many different time zones, we have decided not to offer a take-home midterm this year, and instead we'll offer the group activities as an alternative. So let's talk about the homework assignments. The homework assignments will focus on mathematical theory, but they'll also involve a significant programming component. Homework will be due on Wednesdays and Fridays throughout the semester, and you can upload your assignments to the Harvard Canvas site that's linked to off the main AM205 website. We'll expect you to submit a written report and also associated source code. And when you do the upload to Canvas, we ask that you, you upload the written report either as a PDF or Word document as a separate file. You may also upload other files, uh, such as source code or additional info, and they may be in a zip file. But we prefer that the main write-up is uploaded individually, either as a PDF or Word document, because it actually then displays natively in Canvas, which allows the TFs to grade it directly within Canvas. So the course doesn't have a specific late homework policy, and each case will be evaluated on an individual basis. So the deadlines for homework are on Friday, September 18th, Wednesday, October 7th, Friday, October 23rd, Wednesday, November 11th, and Wednesday, December 2nd. So you'll see here that they are roughly two-week intervals, but they decrease in frequency for the second half of the semester. And this is going really by design to allow more time in the second half of the semester for you to work on your final project. The assignments for the course will be written in LaTeX, which is an excellent platform for writing scientific documents. And while it's totally optional, for AM205, we definitely encourage that you think about using LaTeX for submitting your homework solutions. And the teaching staff are all very familiar with LaTeX and are very happy to answer any questions you might have about the language. So LaTeX is a free software, and it's available on all major computing platforms. And to use LaTeX, you basically have to write in a simple markup language, similar to, for example, if you're writing a HTML file for a website. And so it basically consists of text, but with extra commands that you can use for inserting things like equations and references. There's an excellent guide available called the Not So Short Introduction to LaTeX, and the website is provided here. And this is actually how I originally learned LaTeX a number of years ago. When I post homework to the website, I actually also include the LaTeX file that I used to generate that homework. And so you can use those as a reference, and you may also base your own solutions off them. So the code should be written clearly and commented thoroughly. And the in-class examples all adhere to this standard. And, and the TS should be able to easily understand what your code is doing and be able to run it and reproduce the figures that you submitted. 
So I also want to touch on the academic integrity policy for this course. So we recognize that the discussion and exchange of ideas is really essential for academic work. And for the assignments in this course, you're really encouraged to consult with classmates as you work on problem sets. However, after discussions with your peers, you should make sure that you work through the problem yourself and ensure that any answers that you submit for evaluation are really the result of your own efforts. And really what this boils down to is that when you write this, it should really be written in your own words and not the words of your collaborator or friend. In addition, we expect you to follow standard scientific citation practices. And if you use any books, articles, or websites, then we expect you to cite those in your report. In addition, you should list the names of students that you've collaborated with on problem sets. And one final word, any homework solutions that were posted for AM205 in previous years are forbidden to be used in this course. So let's talk about the group activities. They're worth 6% of the grade, and each is worth 1.5% and graded on participation only. So you can attend any number, but you'll need to attend four for full credit. So the group activities will have many different structures and types, but each one will involve submitting a short report of around one to two pages that's prepared in groups of one to three students. There'll be three tries to submit each report, and if the TS feel that what you submitted is incorrect or insufficient, then they may reject it and provide you with feedback on how to improve. There'll be a very minor incentive for, for attending more than four activities. So if you do n greater than four activities, then you'll receive a n minus four divided by 2% credit, and the final project grade percentage will correspondingly be reduced by that amount. So in other words, for every additional activity that you do, half a percent of the final project grade is kind of guaranteed participation credit instead. Now let's talk about the final project. So the goal of this course is really to get you to become a responsible, productive user of numerical algorithms in real world applications. And so the final project is really your way to demonstrate uh, this. And it will be worth 32% of the grade and it will be completed usually in groups of two to three students. However, we do also allow single person projects and also projects with four students or above. So the idea is that you'll use concepts and methods related to the course to solve a problem of interest to your group. And there'll be a project proposal that's due in the form of an oral meeting with one of the teaching staff by 5 p.m. Eastern time on Friday, November 13th. The project will be due during the final exam period and we don't know the exact date yet because it depends on Harvard scheduling. For the project, you'll be expected to submit a report and associated code, and there'll also be an option to give a final project presentation that will count as two group activities. So the most relevant textbook for the course is Scientific Computing Introductory Survey by Michael Heath, and this is an excellent uh, introductory textbook that contains many long explanations of many of the key ideas. And a lot of the material for the course is kind of structured similarly to Heath, and so Heath is a really good supplement to the material that we cover in the lectures. There are many other textbooks that you might find useful for the course, and some of them are listed here. For example, the book by Trefethen and Bao goes further than the standard material in this course in covering the field of numerical linear algebra. And the book by Press et al. is a very large book that really is highly comprehensive and covers many different algorithms that are used in scientific computing. So that's it for logistics, and I hope that you will take this course. This is actually my seventh time teaching Applied Math 205, and I really love teaching this course, particularly because it tends to attract a wide range of students from many programs across Harvard. We get a number of master's students in the course. We also get many PhD students in a variety of technical fields. And we also get undergraduates in concentrations such as Applied Math, physics, and computer science. The course also tends to attract students from other programs such as economics, public health, and architecture. And when it comes to doing final projects in the course, one thing that's really exciting is to see the wide range of topics that people cover. It just speaks to the broad applicability of the material that's covered in the course. So yeah, so that's it. And I hope to see you during the semester.